exciting project today, but before we get into that, one thing I want to show you straight out of the gate, you might notice a new tent over here. Uh, we did some shifting around. I think the enchanting table like started here and then it moved over there and then it moved over there. It, it was all over the place. We finally settled on a home for the enchanting tent and might I say, this looks wonderful. I like how it's drastically different in style from these couple of tents. It's got like polka dot little sparkle things all over the place. It's got floating candles, floating bookshelves. It's got our enchanting table. And we're gonna be making use of this for a while here in the early stages of the season. What are you doing there, bud? You okay? He's, he's, he's got a fire sale. Wandering traders, I tell you. Anyway, we're going to make a ton of use out of this enchanting setup for the early part of this season. But I want to take a quick peek up here on top of the mountain. This is one of my favorite places to view this campsite. And you'll see here in just a moment that this place feels relatively complete. And it is. The next phase of our build is going to be working on the rest of this area. You might notice uh, there's no more trees. Where'd all the trees go? Well, there's still some there, but we spent an entire live stream just kind of deforesting this entire area we still need to flatten some things out uh, but we are going to segment off this campsite with some custom trees we'll put some flowers and grass and all sorts of stuff in here to make it look a little bit more complete and polished but this campsite is all but finished and we're ready to move on to the next phase of our build but that's not what we're going to be doing today because i'm very excited to let you know that we are doing our first collaboration of the season with prowl if you're excited about it like i am go ahead and hit Hit that like button, go ahead and subscribe, do all the things, leave a comment for me, and we'll get on into today's project. I cannot believe it's been over a month since the start of Bedrock Guide Season 2, and this is the first time, uh, aside from like two seconds in Episode 1, that Prowl and I have been on camera together. Hi, Prowl. Hey, buddy. How's it going? It's going great. I'm excited for today because we've got a cool collaboration that we're going to be working on. Uh, Prowl, tell them what we're going to be working on. Uh, well, first of all, how do you like my beautiful face? Um, my hair is growing back in. My beard. Are you sure that's hair? Because it kind of looks like somebody flung some poo at you. Oh, okay. It's I ate a cupcake right before we started recording. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it tasted really good. <laughs> anyway, was it chocolate? Uh, it, it, can you not tell here? You want to? You want to? No. A little bit? Get away. Yeah, we're going to be working on a little project here today, and uh, I'm going to explain the format to you guys real quick, and I'll let Blue Jay kind of talk about what it is that we're actually going to be doing. But, sure. Um, previously, when we've worked together in the last season of the guide, we would both do the farm together and then both do the build together, and we would kind of like share the parts of it, and like I think we've made it work okay, but it, it could be better. We can do better. So now what we've decided to do is any farm that we can both make our own way. There's a drown down there. Get out of the boat. Oh, he's fine. Just let him, just let him be. He'll be okay. You'll be okay. all right, buddy. Here. This is the second time in today's video. Aww. Somebody's caught themselves on fire. That wasn't me. I tried to save him. It didn't Next work. time we're getting prowl. No, you're not kidding me. Anyways, so basically when we can do a farm together that we can both do our own way, we're going to build two versions of the same farm, Blue Jay's version and my version, and then we'll come together to actually make the build around it and make them look connected and cool. And I think it'll be a really fun, unique experience. You'll get to see two ways to do the same thing, yep. but then you'll also get like this really cool experience at the end of it. And we have a special one here for you today. Blue Jay. Let them know what's going on. All right, so Prowl, we are going yep. to be doing fish farms today, and I'm Woo. still kind of relatively early game. I, I know you're a lot farther along than me, Mr. Full-Timer. And, uh, oh, dude, dude, before what? we go what? any farther, this is important, okay? I, okay. I am actually being serious. I'm gonna be nice to you for once. Everybody in the comment section right now, give Prowl a huge congratulations. He just passed 50,000 subscribers. That's 50. huge. Let's go. It's huge. So, Thank you, sir. Dude. We're gonna be building fish farms together and you're a lot farther than I am. I'm a little bit early game, so I've I've brought what I can. I'm gonna contribute four magma blocks to the what? to the cause, and in return you're gonna give me four stacks of magma blocks. Does that seem okay to you? Is that fair? I mean, I don't feel like that's the going conversion rate, but what I'll do is I'll log it in a book and then I'll charge interest. <laughs> log, and... log log it. 
log it in a book. Uh, uh, yeah, a log I brought it in the a book. logs. These are all the logs that I brought. Well, not the spruce ones, but we'll pretend that they're mine too. I brought all the oak logs. So That's a lot of oak logs. Okay. It is. Okay. I deforested a, a whole area. We're good. We we can compromise. I'll bring some logs. You bring the magma blocks. We're going to be building some cool fish farms and uh, hopefully bringing our own little twist to them. Yeah, and also people should know, me and Blue Jay, while we don't, we don't resource share, I'm not like giving him stuff that I have, but when we do these collaborative projects, we will collaboratively pool our materials together for the particular project that we're doing. Uh, I think what we're gonna do, I think what we're gonna do is Blue Jay is gonna take this side of the like little pond, lake-like area, whatever you wanna call this thing. And I'm, oh, okay. Copper ingot, here, look. Is that your first copper ingot? It is now. Um, I, I've got <laughs> plenty of copper at home. I don't know if I've smelted any of it yet, but. Sure, okay, well, I'll I'm take I could, it. I'm glad I could contribute. Thank so you. Blue Jay's, Blue Jay's gonna take this side. I'm gonna take the other side. We're gonna build our fish farms and do our tutorials on them separately from each other. I'm, I might possibly have to pluck him with a mending bow. I don't know. Um, oh, look, look at that infinity bow aim. Look at that infinity bow aim. Keep running, Brown. Can he, can he, can he, oh. And we'll come back together at some point or A at some point during the process. And we'll build this thing into something really awesome. So, Blue Jay, anything else before we break off into our own separate little portions here? I think that's it. The first thing that I want to do today is try to figure out where we're going to build this farm. And we need to avoid some of these guys that drowned. They're kind of scary. They're a little bit mean, especially if they've got a trident. If we see a trident drowned, we need to be careful because they do a little bit of damage. But we're going to try to put our farms in this general area back at the back. And the first thing that we need to do is get our rail platform in place because once we've got the magma cubes down for this build it's going to be a lot more difficult to get that in there so we'll go down here and we're going to put a temporary pillar block right here and as we are standing on y level 59 this is exactly where we need to be with rails in order to make room for magma cubes and still have enough room for water to actually spawn the fish in this area so we'll go ahead and break these out because i do have just enough dark oak blocks to do what we need to do and and we're gonna make this farm a 16 by 16 area. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And we'll make sure that we're not too close to Prowl because we wanna make sure to give our space, uh, make sure he has enough space to build. And I'll, honestly, I think I could probably come over maybe another block or two. So maybe shift this down to right here and then we'll break the one off on this side and maybe we'll shift it down another block or two. Just make sure you keep track of how many blocks are shifting things down. If you do happen to move them, we wanna make sure we do have a 16 by 16 area. This is going to be a one chunk build. No, I'm not necessarily worried about being chunk aligned this season because it doesn't seem like chunk alignment really matters with some of the bugs in the game right now entities disappear but i've never really had any issues with minecarts disappearing fingers crossed this will probably be the season it happens but let's go ahead and make this 16 by 16 area uh one thing while we're filling this in i did want to make you aware of that fish farms have actually changed with the release of caves and cliffs part two you used to be able to go to a river biome or an ocean biome and build uh your farm up in the air as long as it was within the biome it wouldn't really matter and uh, fish would spawn they have changed the mechanics to where fish will not spawn anywhere above the sea level of the world so sea level right here if we stand on the block that is submerged in the water you can see that it is at y level 63 so fish will not spawn above this area uh, hence why we're building it down a little bit lower the next thing that we need to do is fill in this entire platform so that there are no empty spaces because we are going to be running a rail line across here and that will serve as our pickup device when we get drops from the fish farm so again it is vitally important that you do this part of the build first because if you place the magma blocks down before you do the rails it's just going to make it a whole lot harder on yourself to get access to this area we want to make sure this is good and running before we do anything else with the farm We've got our 16 by 16 platform, and now I'm gonna go ahead and destroy it. <laughs> We're gonna take out one row of blocks from each end of the platform, and it's going to be one block inside of the outer edge. It is nice that we had all of our enchantments done in the last episode because we do have Aqua Affinity and Depth Strider and the things that make it nice to work underwater. I would not suggest trying this farm before having those things, unless you've got like a conduit or something. But if you, let's face it, if you've got a conduit, you probably have enchantments by 
right now. You just want to make sure you've got enough ability to stay underwater for a decent amount of time so that it's not going to affect your workflow because uh, it can be quite a bit slower if you don't have these nice enchantments equipped. In the place of the dark oak that we pulled out from the platform, we're just going to do a solid row of redstone blocks. If you're still early game like me, this is a pretty large sacrifice. That is a lot of redstone, but thankfully I'm not doing much with it right now. We're not quite into the major farm portion of the season, so we can recoup this pretty easily. And then what I'm going to do is take this outer corner right here, and I'm going to place a block right there and right there. I'm going to go ahead and leave this bottom block in place. You don't need it if you're not concerned about the visual, but I kind of want it to look like this is all connected up. Uh, this is the block that you need for the mechanics of this farm to work, so make sure to leave that there. This is kind of the first introduction into redstone for this season of the Bedrock Guide, so if you're new to Minecraft or just returning, you've never done anything with redstone before, redstone is basically the electronics or mechanics of Minecraft. You can do some pretty cool stuff with it. We're going to be very simple with what we're doing today, but I'll try to explain it as simply as possible. Redstone blocks and redstone torches and redstone in general, that is the source of power for Minecraft. And what we can do, uh, we've got a powered rail right here. If we place it down just on any old block, it's going to stay dark like that. It doesn't do anything. In fact, if a minecart rolls over this rail, it's just going to come to a halt. But if we place a redstone rail on a power source, we get a powered rail that is actually powered. Then if we connect up a another powered rail to this rail, it's actually going to stay powered, which is very, very cool as well. We want to make sure to have three powered rails right here on the end so that when the minecart bounces off this block, it's going to power it to go the opposite direction and it'll just kind of bounce back and forth between uh, our storage area, which I'm thinking might go over there and uh, the edge of this farm. We don't necessarily need powered rails all the way down, but I do want to test this out with a minecart really quick because I haven't done a whole lot of underwater redstone building and I'm sure you're just as curious as I am to find out is the minecart actually going to roll like it does on the surface? So we can go ahead and craft one minecart just like that with some iron and we'll place it down here on the furthest powered rail right up against this block so that it will start rolling and ooh, it just barely makes it. So I'm going to go ahead and split the difference. We're going to break out this rail right here and we're going to go ahead and put a couple more powered rails in the middle. And because these powered rails do connect up and it will power this rail, we only need one more row of redstone blocks. So we can save a little bit on resources there and this should give us a little bit more consistency in the roll so let's go ahead and roll it Yep, we got the power pushing it on through, and I'm pretty comfortable with that rate of travel. So we get down here to the end of the row, and we got to bend this rail around the corner because it can't just go straight off into oblivion. We need it to stay on the platform. So regular rails, you can curve. Powered rails, you cannot. So we'll take two regular rails like that, and it will curve them around. But then if we go ahead and place a powered rail down here, it will curve it on around again, and it'll just do a little bit of a U-turn. Then we can follow this same pattern. Powered rail, powered rail, regular rails all the way around regular rails all the way to the end and I think I'm gonna make this one a regular rail I guess technically we don't even need the powered rail here we'll go ahead and break that and put a regular rail down oh no be careful with rails they're very annoying sometimes they don't go where you want them to and then we'll go ahead and put a powered rail here and because of the way that rails work if we place a regular rail down here it's gonna curve it into that powered rail because it's it's there. We don't want that to happen, so what we can do is place a regular rail here, a regular rail there, and it will force it to go into this rail because it's a little bit more accessible. Then we'll go ahead and do the same thing. We'll run the rail line all the way down. We'll just kind of weave it in and out until we have rails all across this platform. This is the point in the video where Blue Jay uh, pretends that he didn't make a mistake and we just move on. Whoops. So if I would have done my maths correctly, uh, I wanted the end of the rail to come out this way, but um, that that that's not happening. And because I want to do it right, I'm not just going to be like, let's just run another uh, set of blocks along the side here and waste more resources that we don't have. I am going to reverse this whole thing. So we actually need to move this over and we need to put it back here. And then we need to redirect all of these rails uh, to end up here. It shouldn't be too hard. We just kind of have to reverse the flow a little bit. So let me fix that up. It's the same thing that we did before, just in reverse. And then we should have our rails coming out on that back corner over there. So we're sitting here at the top of this little hill, ready to go down underwater. 
This didn't used to be the case, but minecarts for quite a while now have been able to travel underneath the water, and it used to be a Bedrock Edition exclusive, uh, and now Java Edition can do it as well, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but here we go. We're going to go ahead and go down the hill, and you can see the minecart still rolls, and we will make it all the way around the track. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Wow, Prowl's cooking along. He's getting stuff on his platform already. He's way, he's, he's way far ahead of me. We need to get moving. Here we are just goofing around. Around, riding around in a minecart, but it's fine. Once we get all the way to the end of the platform, we will bounce off the wall and we'll head all the way back down this way. Hi, Prowl. Hello. Look at me. Is this like whack-a-mole? Get out of here. <laughs> Got him. Anyway, we'll make our way back up to the top here, and that's where it's going to stop for now. We want to make sure we get all of the spawns possible, so what we're going to do is we're going to place magma cubes down next, and uh, this is the easy part. If you just place the magma cubes down directly on top of the rails, it will automatically leave an air gap in between because technically this rail... Ow! Get out of here. You're next. As I was saying, if you place a magma cube down directly on top of the rail, this rail technically acts like it takes an entire space of a block, uh, so nothing can go directly on top of the rail this is technically directly on top of the rail which is nice because it leaves room for minecarts to flow underneath this platform and this platform is important because this is going to be the killing mechanism for all of these spawns so i'm gonna go ahead and place the same pattern all the way around a 16 by 16 area of magma cubes and then we'll talk a little bit about why this works the way that it does magma blocks are actually one of a couple of different blocks that makes water react and cause bubbles to form with magma blocks in particular they actually pull things down directly onto them. So here we go. We're standing on it and you might notice we're taking some damage. The reason why we take damage is because magma, it's actually pretty hot. It would damage you in real life, so it does the same thing in Minecraft. And as you might notice, we've actually already had a few things spawn on the platform. We've got some fish and we've got some bones here. Whenever the fish or squid decide to spawn on this platform, they will be pulled down directly onto the magma blocks. When they take enough damage, they will drop fish and bones and ink, and they will just kind of sit there. This is why we built the minecart track. Minecarts are good for more than just letting us take a joy ride. I'm going to take some planks and I'm going to craft one chest and then I'll grab a little bit more of my iron. And with that iron, you need five to be exact. We're going to craft a hopper and then we're going to take the hopper and place it right there. And then we'll grab a minecart, place it right there. We have a minecart combined with hopper. This is where some of those video game mechanics come into play. And this wouldn't actually work this way in real life. But uh, the minecart with hopper does something really cool. When you place it down on the track, it'll start rolling, rolling, rolling. We see we've got some drops on here. It will actually suck the items through the floor into the hopper. And it will collect them and keep them there. You'll see them slowly disappearing. We'll watch these here for just a second. The minecart should pass by. And there you go. We saw couple items disappear they are officially inside of that minecart with hopper ready to be safely transported to our storage area which happens to be next over here i'm going to keep it the same theme that we've been rolling with with our campsite and i'm going to use barrels and what i'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and go up actually one above uh, the sea level here we're going to go right here and we'll go until we've got 10 barrels all the way across like that and maybe we'll actually go ahead and break that one since we've got the room for it and we're going to go down here and i think we'll place the barrel right there on the edge because we can always take some of that out if we want to build some things around this which we probably will and we're just going to do the same thing across the top row here so that all of our barrels are facing forward then without damaging too much of the mountainside so that we don't ruin the look we're going to go behind our barrels and we're just going to dig a one wide row so that the back of the barrels are all exposed exposed and then what we can do is take a hopper and we need to crouch because if we don't it's just going to open the barrel when we press the right click button when we crouch we can place a hopper facing directly back into i've got this nice little texture pack showing an arrow uh, indicating that it's going into the barrel we need to place another one right here and we just need to do this all the way down the row so that all of these hoppers are facing into the back of the barrels hoppers are a great resource in the game for carrying items from one place to another 
So the place that we're going to be carrying items is from the minecart into the hopper and then from the hopper into the barrels. Then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing here and we're going to crouch so that we don't open the hopper item inventory. Uh, we want to crouch and place powered rails directly on top of this so that our minecart will roll freely over them. And as the minecart with hopper rolls over the hoppers, it will deposit items downward into those. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bust one of these blocks out right here and we're going to place a redstone block down to power all of these rails. The powered rail doesn't have to be sitting on top of redstone block to power it. It just has to be a adjacent to a redstone block or some other sort of power source in order for this to get power. The thing we want to be careful with hoppers is that if we are directly touching the hopper with the redstone block, it will lock the hopper and not allow items to flow through it freely, uh, but we should be okay because this redstone block is one block above and diagonal to that hopper. And now all we need to do is take our minecart with hopper and give this a quick test. We'll drop it down. Uh, it's not going. There we go. <laughs> I don't know why it paused there. It hesitated for a second, but our minecart with hopper is on its way. It's going to pick up all of these items. And then when it comes back, we should have some items in these barrels. Now, we're not getting too fancy early game with redstone here. Uh, the items are just going to distribute randomly throughout these barrels. The only sense of order that it does have is that the hoppers, because of the way that they work, they will pull items down before they will push items forward uh, as long as we have them oriented the way that they are and so the bottom row of barrels should fill up first and then once those are full the hoppers behind them will fill up and once no more items can be pulled into those hoppers they will start filling up the top row of barrels i don't know how long this is going to take to fill this up because uh, there's quite a few barrels here 20 to be exact but there's one more thing that we need to consider before we call this farm complete from a mechanical standpoint we need a spot to go afk if you don't know what AFK means, it's basically away from keyboard. It means we're going to stand at this farm while we're not playing. Maybe we're off having dinner. Maybe we're taking a nap and the farm is running automatically. So here's how we're going to determine the location of our AFK spawn platform. We need to keep in mind that our platform is 16 blocks wide. So I've done a little bit of maths and if I've done it correctly, I'm calculating that about 29 blocks above the magma cubes is where we want to be. The difference between this magma block platform and the highest level of land that is submerged in water around this area is four blocks. So if we go 29 blocks above the spawn platform here, we should be able to maintain the 16 by 16 area of spawnability while pushing this level directly out of the spawnable area for fish. Does that make sense? If not, it barely makes sense to me. So you're not alone. Just know we're going to try for 29 blocks and make sure that we get some spawns. And I will confirm with you once we know that that is true. I'm not really a fan of this for obvious reasons. We're going to get rid of it and then we're going to replace it with water. That seems a little bit more safe, right? What I do like about this is it does come uh, pretty close to where we need to be. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this stone right here with glass. Whenever we get an elytra, we'll go ahead and remove most of this because we can just fly up here. But for now, I kind of want it to be as invisible as possible. But Y level 80 is where we're looking to get our uh, AFK platform going. So we'll go all the way out here and we'll make sure that we are smack dab in the middle of of the farm and unfortunately we're out of glass all right we've got some fish spawning the only problem is we've got prowl over here running around and uh it, it might be causing a little bit of a a, a misfire in some of our spawns uh so we're not going to test it too thoroughly right now i am going to leave afk a little bit later but one thing that we want to do to protect the farm from fish like this escaping from the platform is we're going to box it in i've got some spruce here and we're just going to do something like this we're going to place a temporary block right here and then we'll place a temporary block right here and then we're just going to go down the line like this sideways and then another temporary block and we'll frame it in all the way around all right there we go that should keep all of the mobs in and all of the unwanted things out maybe we'll go ahead and do what prowl did over there and uh we'll, we'll put some pillars up here just to give it a little bit more structure i'm not going to do any decorating just yet because i do need to figure out a good design but one thing i am going to do to polish this up a little bit is we're going to go ahead and go around and 
rip all of these logs, and then I'm gonna spend a little bit of time AFK, seeing how this thing works. Hey, look at Prowlway up there. How's he getting spawns? This is the point in the video where I tell you, don't ever try to do math on the fly while you're talking and thinking about farm mechanics and all sorts of things all at once, uh, because you might mistake 29 blocks with 19. I know some of you have been screaming at me for the last several minutes. You're not 29 blocks above the platform. Blue Jay, do your math correctly. We're gonna move. Hang on. Hey, that's more like it. We're officially 29 blocks above the fish farm at this point. And as you can see, we got fish spawning. That's fantastic. Now, we still have a few fish swimming around the lake here uh, that were spawning when I was traveling up and when Prowl was traveling up. They will despawn at some point. It might take a little while for them to go away, but at that point, we will get some maximum efficiency from our fish farm because nothing else should be able to spawn down in the water. Hey, look at that. We got a squid. We got a squid. So I think we're pretty good at this point. 29 blocks above the fish farm. We should be getting maximum spawn rates at this point. And we're just going to sit here for a while and see what we can get. So some things have happened. It's been a while since the last cut. And me and Blue Jay, we're live on stream right now. And we've done some stuff, haven't we? A lot of stuff. I mean, we haven't done a lot. It's been a little bit. Like, we, we threw a few logs down, a few, threw, a few slabs down, some lanterns. Yeah. It's nothing major, but... You want to take a look at it? It's exactly as I said, Prowl. It's it's nothing. Yes. It's nothing major. <laughs> nothing, nothing big. Nothing crazy. Nothing big oh, at all. Is, so I love the way this turned out. Prowl, this is a, a winding staircase, right? Super, super cool. Yes. That is not intended to be like efficient with downward travel, but make use of the space available, right? Because it is a mountainside. We got to make sure that we're traveling down the mountainside correctly. Um, and to work with the cliff face. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. And then from here, it kind of splits off into our two separate areas and we can kind of go yes. down this way this is my direction and uh you know we'll show off my direction here in a few minutes when we we cut away with prowl but dude look at this thing oh it's so cool my favorite view is probably over here and there you go we got the staircase oh, kind of sticking out the side of the mountain and we got our fish farms we got some greenery all sorts of stuff going on oh it looks so good it looks so good not only does it look good in normal mode it looks even better with rtx turned on Oh, yes, it does. Man. <laughs> man, oh, man. This place turned out so good. Yeah. And the sun's about it. to go down, too, to show what this place looks like at nighttime. While we're waiting on this the sun to go down, Prowl, why don't you talk a little bit about the decisions that we made with uh, why we used the specific wood types that we did? Yeah, so just to kind of tough toe on things kind of briefly here, we went with woods that kind of looked like they were more, like, saturated with water and wet in areas that are touching the water. So you can see, like, the strip spruce logs look like they've, like, they've been worn over time just by the water um i guess like eating away at the bark and like soaking them with water right and then down here we have spruce with dark oak because this is the area it's actually touching water so it's more wet than the top area here that's got oak and spruce where you just have some planks that are wet right you can tell there's a little bit of wear and tear going on this place has been here for a little while right you got some little holes down mm -hmm. that I keep falling into mm -hmm. and you got some missing rails and that sort of thing uh, another thing that we kind of considered with our build is lighting. Uh, we play with RTX mode on uh, a lot of times. I like to use it when I'm not recording. I don't use it often for the, for videos just because that's not the experience for a lot of players, but I do like to look at it in RTX. And we kind of made some decisions with lighting to make sure that one, it lights it well, and two, that it's not just spamming lights all over the place because that does look a little bit too, uh, too saturated, too busy, whatever. And I think we found a good balance with how much lighting that we need to use to to light it sufficiently for rtx but also not make it look too busy so uh we hung some lights from the uh the beams on the staircase we put some lights over on the floor it just wherever we could throw lights we put lights down and i'm really happy with the outcome yeah very like unsymmetrical unorganized fashion kind of just like you know they were just hanging lights as they built things up when they were building this place in the first place just to kind of like the and do the construction and just make sure there's enough light in the areas where there's nothing that's too dark basically blue jay this place looks absolutely <laughs> like majestic at oh, nighttime. It's so cool look at this just, just the magma blocks alone illuminate the area and then we got our lanterns and the beautiful water the lava reflecting off the water back there everything is just oh so good yeah it, it really it really does look good and if you like it so much you should probably go down there and take a look ow i don't care i'm not even mad 
Oh, Prowl. Oh, man. So beautiful. This... I'm going to. You know what, sir? What? Job well done. You too. I'm going to turn off my HUD for a second just so we don't have the little hot bar uh, d d conflicting with a beautiful view here. This is so, so good. I'm so happy. Yeah, it turned out really good. Awesome, dude. Good job. You too. High five. With our RTX pack still turned on, I want to go over here and check out my storage area since we are done hanging out with Prowl for this episode. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. We did a lot of detailing, but check this out. Boom! Almost full barrels all the way down the bottom row. And uh, that's only going to get even more full as time goes on. And we're going to have to go ahead and take some of this stuff out to use it. I'm mostly concerned about the bones early game, but this is not a bad thing to have either. Uh, I don't want to rely on fish this season because I ate my fair share of fish in season one of the Bedrock Guide. And I just, I'm kind of tired of it. I want something else to eat. But Prowl and I put in about three and a half hours of work on this entire area. And we were both pretty shocked at how much how much we actually got done in that time we finished this entire area so uh this was not a build episode this was a farm episode so hope you guys understand that we didn't really do any of this on camera we saved it for a live stream if you are interested in seeing that i do have the live stream replays posted to my youtube channel so be sure to check out the live stream replays playlist and you can see all of the shenanigans that prowl and i got up to while we were building this and kind of see the process as it goes along but hey that's gonna be it for today thanks for checking it out out. I appreciate the support. Once again, like, subscribe, leave a comment. You're amazing.